Welcome back to the Last Row Podcast. My name is Drew, and as always, I am joined by my friend, co-host, and life partner, Mr. Badway. Hello. If you're looking for us on the web, thelastrowpodcast.com is our website. We are on Twitter at the Last Row Pod, Facebook.com slash the Last Row Pod, Google Plus, Google Play, all of those hot spots. Hit us up on iTunes, leave us a five-star review if you're enjoying the show. We watched Passengers the other day. We decided we'd do a little bit of a mini episode for you just to put something back out there. It's been a little while. Get our feet wet. We'll be back in two weeks. It'll be Thursday, I think May 5th is the date, right, yeah. Badway? Cinco de Mayo. With On Cinco de Mayo, we're going to celebrate. Or Cuatro de, it might be Cuatro de Mayo. <laughs> Cuatro de Mayo. One of those, yeah, whatever the Thursday is. <laughs> we're going to celebrate with watching Tom Berenger beat up Juan Lacus in The Substitute, which is available on Amazon Video On Demand for free if you have Amazon yeah. Prime video check it out can't wait to do that one in a couple weeks here so yeah we got a lot of material on that one go um, is packed away we're getting ready to record that one we're gonna, it's going to be a little laid out so just want to let you know that we um we're gonna be back in a more of a regular schedule coming up here but um yeah we watched passengers i mean just on a whim um random weekend last week and we thought you know no intention of doing an episode but we thought there's some ridiculous things we're talking there. about yeah a little something you know a little something something a little something something yeah. bad way Hit me up with a plot synopsis. So, um, you know, Passengers came out last year, 2016, fantasy slash sci-fi. Not hard sci-fi, it's soft not sci-fi. Hard. Directed by Morton Tildum. Would you say it was flaccid sci-fi? It's flaccid sci-fi, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Anyway, how, how do you like your Morton Tildum? You know, is this uh, one of his better works? Was he inept? I don't yeah, think I, he I was. I don't know. He wasn't very inept. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's done things, I don't know. Um, IMDB rating seven out of ten. There's no points, just plain seven out seven. of ten. A seven point no, one. No I thought it was a seven point one myself. <laughs> they really like, give it its due. I I listed another score there, which I think you should <laughs> you should probably say. Yeah, I don't know what that thirty one means. It's the thirty one percentage score. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we, we brought we, it back. <laughs> we've been putting out these uh ratings, and uh, we don't like the IMDb's. We don't like the Rotten Tomatoes. So we decided we're going to do our own ratings at the end of these episodes. Kind of like a fun twist on our own um, our own one to ten scoreboard, uh, but we'll get to that towards the end of this episode as we give our score after you uh, you learn what it's all about. So, Drew, passengers on a routine journey through space to a new home, two passengers. I, I like that they put it in there right away. <laughs> sleeping in suspended animation, are awakened ninety years too early when their ship malfunctions, as Jim and Aurora face living the rest of their lives on board with every luxury they could ever ask for, including Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> Some futuristic version which of Which they made like a huge deal about and whatever. They begin to fall for each other, unable to deny their intense attraction until they discover the ship is in grave danger. With the lives of 5,000 sleeping passengers at stake, only Jim and Aurora can save them all. So let me ask you this Rated first. Straight, straight up. Yo. Would it, would it have been better? I can't even speak today. That's all right. If Chris Pretty Pratt's well. name wasn't Jim, I feel like he didn't look like a Jim. Did, you, did he look like a Jim? I don't even to you? remember. It was, I mean, he's a James. James? I'd call him James. I don't know. He didn't. I guess like Jim is a very engineer name. It's yeah. just like, a, like a, just an engineer, like, you mm. know, like blue collar guy. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just what do you a, want him to be? He didn't. I don't Bobby? know. Bob no, the but like Bob? with a name like Aurora, yeah. Aurora is very futuristic. Yeah. You know, it's like Aurora and Jim. Yeah, like, it I, just, I guess. I don't know. Like, it, well, it, it lends to the kind of character that she was, but right, <laughs> she was she was way Which more. We'll, we'll get into spacey than than Jim. Right, I'm gonna lay this out right now, Drew. Yeah. So this is gonna be a spoiler heavy episode. Yes. So if, if you, you haven't want seen this. to watch Passengers and you don't want to have any spoilers, stop listening like instantly. Yes, but here's what I recommend. But don't don't stop listening yet. If I hope they didn't turn it off. I said that you don't have to watch this movie, you guys. You really don't have to. It's not that great, but it's kind of fun, yeah. in, in a dumb way. So, but if you want to watch it, yeah. then don't listen right. to this. But I recommend you just listen to this episode and let us tell you the quick spoilers and we get into the phys- philosophical and moral debates that are presented in, yes. within this movie. That's what it's all about. That's where the fun of this movie comes from. It's not from the acting, which wasn't great. It's not from the story, which wasn't great. It's not from the plot, which had a good start, a good premise, but kind of fell apart midway through, and the ending was kind of sucked. But, <laughs> it kind of sucked. Uh, but uh, all I'm saying is you don't have to watch this movie. I think you're better off just listening to us 
uh, stumble our way through it. So yeah, I I would agree with that. I think um, you know as we get to the toward the end of it, you'll you'll hear maybe our personal ratings on it, which mm-hmm. I think is a great idea. I just previewed you know my personal ratings. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's good, but. Just give me and how does this movie go? Because it's pretty easily summarized, right? Like, yeah. So tell me what happens. All right. So spoiler start now. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's sleeping in a tube, and all of a sudden Chris Pratt wake, wake wakes up. We're not gonna call him Jim. Call him Chris Pratt. Which, by the way, I have I had a childhood friend whose name was Brad Pratt, and I'm gonna call Chris Pratt Brad Pratt at least five times this <laughs> episode. Brad. I'm sorry ahead of time. Is this like a fantasy of yours? You know, like Brad Pratt. You know. <laughs> Brad Chris Pratt, Pratt got famous. Yeah. Brad Pratt was like his name should be Brad Pratt in the movie. I think you know <laughs> Brad. Brad. Yeah, Brad's a good space straight at space name, it's, right? It's like up there with Aurora. You can tell we haven't done this in a while. I'm rambling. Don't worry, I'll just cut it all out. Yeah, <laughs> just edit and post. I'm not is that, editing. Is that what anything. they say? To, what is, is it post? Post. Like, you edit it and post. I'll take care of is it. That, is that the way they do it? We'll, we'll do it live. Um. All right. So anyway, so he wakes up from space. T- come to find out, he wasn't supposed to be woken up for what was it? 67, 90 years, 90 like years, 100 years or something, right? Like 90 years. He had 90 years left on his sleep. So he's going to die, right? If he doesn't get back to sleep anytime soon. Yeah. He tries everything he can, goes through the whole ship. There's a whole, like, I don't know, would you say Tom Cruise, uh, Tom, Tom Hanks uh, castaway yeah, situation? Yeah, it's very on? castaway. Yeah. He's by himself. He's trying to figure out what's going yeah. on. He looks through different, you know, things. He tries Annuals. different food. He's got to try to eat stuff. He's trying to fix the pod. Yeah. Can't work. He's talking to himself. Yeah, he's got the state-of-the-art computers. Like, there's touchscreen. Like, the computers are talking to him, giving him tips. But it's like, they think that he's supposed to be awake. Like, the whole, something's malfunctioned, right? Yes. So... You you saw them fly through some asteroid field. Yeah. is basically what it was, right? And yeah. it, it did something to it the hit ship. Hit some kind that's... of asteroid. His only friend is the bartender, which is a which is a cyborg. It's very well done. What's his Michael name? Sheen? Michael is Sheen. Great puts job on by him. Acting clinic in this so, in this movie. So of course he grows a beard, gets depressed, goes out in space, attempts suicide, doesn't work. Trips on his broken vodka bottle on the way back from attempted suicide, and sees. The young and beautiful uh, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, the woman of his dreams, asleep soundly in her pod, getting ready to be woken up ninety years from now, and and as they're on their way to a new planet to to yeah. populate a new planet. So he thinks long and hard about it. I think six months go by, a year. He does year it goes a by, year. bounces some ideas off the fake bartender, and boom, he wakes her up. See now, this is a surprise because you didn't know that from the previews. Yeah, the preview didn't give that right. away. So he wakes her up. She doesn't know that he woke her up. He's like, oh, wow, these pods are opening early. And so she's like all like, you know, she does the whole thing that he went through, mortified that, you know, I'm going to die here most likely unless I get back to sleep. But at least I have somebody else here. Long story short, he tries to schmooze her, fall in love. They fall in love. Take me here from here, Drew. I don't feel like talking <laughs> well, anymore. You're, you're over it. Yeah. Yeah. So the the whole thing is he has this deep, dark secret where... He woke her up. He had a moral quandary whether he should wake her up or not, which we'll get into in a minute. He tells the bartender because he was talking to the bartender, his only friend. The bartender, you know, there's this whole secret of uh, don't tell her. Don't tell her. <laughs> and he like trusts this. Don't machine. trust the bartender. I don't the care machine. if he's a robot or like, not. Man. So the bartender eventually spills the beans. She what, finds out. She's upset. At some point, Lawrence, Fis- Lawrence Fishburn wakes up because this whole the whole plot is that he can't get into the pod to wake the crew up to tell them mm-hmm. it's through a locked room. It's completely separate. You need some security access. Lawrence Fishburne wakes up. They're kind of fighting. Lawrence Fishburne dies <laughs> within like 10 I, minutes. I, I got I got I like that. You can't quite say the word Fishburne. Fishburne. Yeah. It's really giving me joy right I'm now. I'm struggling right it's now. It's like Fishburne. It's like when I try to <laughs> say the real world. <laughs> it's, I, have, I have an impediment today. All right, go on. So he dies. They finally save the place. They he fixes this medical pod. You know he almost dies. She brings him back. It's it's a long convoluted yeah. mess that turns into a space love story rather yeah. than a survival story. Right. And you know it comes down to it. She gives up the grudge that she has to save him, and he allows her to go into this pod. They found one pod. The whole thing was that they couldn't get back to sleep. They were going to die. Well, there is a, a, the ability to put them one of them back to sleep. She chooses not to use it. She forgives him for waking him, which becomes a whole huge thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, it sounds like they grew some trees on the plant. Andy Garcia shows up for yeah. one scene. Yeah, and the, the highest paid it. extra in the history of the world, Andy Garcia. But but the point is, right, there's two 
equally different halves to this movie. You mm-hmm. mentioned it first. The first half is is very castaway, yeah, like type movie, the stranded alone movie. And the yeah. second half is is a love story between him and Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, and I vastly like uh, uh, just enjoyed the first half so much more than the second half. But there's a couple things like outside of the story. Let me just say this. The visuals in this movie were spectacular. It was one of the best looking movies I've seen in a long time. And it seemed like there was a good blend of practical effects and CG. And I thought that they did a really good job without making it too in your face. I don't know how you feel about that. What did you think? Yeah. Um, um, it comes to mind the scene where Jennifer Lawrence is swimming in the pool and the gravity kind of breaks. Yeah. And uh, if that's how you say it, and she's basically trapped in a, in a bubble above the swimming pool about to drown. Like that was a really cool yeah. scene. Really, really effective scene. But yeah, I, but I think like the two halves of the movie also have two like of really of the really big like uh, you know find yourself type questions about the first one. If you were stranded on the on the space pod, you're all alone. You go through the depression, you go through the anxiety, and then you you go through the boredom. And then the second half is when when he finally awakens the girl. You know his you know I was gonna die alone. I, my back was against the wall. I was desperate. I wake this girl up. I may have killed her, but at the same time, I can't. I got to go out swinging. Yeah, that whole thing. So there's really the two halves have some really important questions. Just the first half kind of tackled the the movie aspect of it or the enjoyment of it better than the second half did. For so me. let me ask you this, and and maybe we can tackle this as we get into the moral questions. But the first one that I want to say is, it seems like this is there's an allegory to some cruise liner, right? There, it seems like they're on some big you know Norwegian cruise or. or mm-hmm. Car- carnival cruise yeah. they have all the amenities they have the food there's oh, different yeah. classes of tiers you know yep. we find out that chris pratt is the engineer so he's very low and the whole point of this is that they're traveling to populate a new world and it seems very similar to some of the stuff like with it looks like the alien covenant uh trailer coming up you yep. know they're they're going to this new place and it seems like this company has been putting people out for a long time He's chosen to go because he's an engineer. He's got useful skills. He's on the lower class of passengers. You know, she's on the upper class. She was, she's a writer. So why is it? Why is a writer better than an engineer? Drew? Because she had money to pay for the trip. Oh. And that's where... So he was hired and she yeah. and she bought her ticket. They need oh, him. I missed that. Okay. She bought her ticket oh. and she bought a you know, a round trip ticket as we find out later, which we can yeah. get into as well. But that's ridiculous. Go what, on. Is it, <laughs> is it really so bad to be on this ship? I think by yourself. Yes. But with the two of them, it, before stuff started malfunctioning, it's not so bad. You got to really love the person, man. I'll tell you what though. He took a, he took a risk because waking her up. How does he even know that she would get with him? Is it the whole, if you were the last man no, on the it's, earth, it's the total last man on earth scenario. I gotta tell you, you you can you can convince any man or woman to uh, to get with you over time if you're the last man or woman on earth. It's just the way it is. How do you think? How do you think you would do living on the ship by yourself? Would you Would you have woken her up? Put it that way. I, I'd be dead. You would I, die. I, I would have died before I woke her up. But but what would kill you though? Because you'd have food. You got your your wristband. You I would can... have screwed something up and and like breathe the space air or something. <laughs> the space, however, the, however the lack it works. Thereof. However it works. The lack you know? I would have gone outside. You know where he takes like he does like the little like journey outside yeah, like the they, spacewalk. They have basically it's like an amusement park ride where you yeah. go and tether yourself and you get to float outside like an astronaut. I would have tried that like day three, and I would have like forgot to hook myself. And I would <laughs> but have it was automatic space forever. <laughs> but would you? Let's say you didn't do that. Yeah. Could you have survived? Like, you know, are you the type of guy that you want to be alone? Like, you just want to be by yourself? Like, you have a company of an android bartender by played by Michael <sighs> Sheen. Would that do it for you, or would you go crazy? I. Yeah, I'd have gone crazy. There's no way. Like, I don't have the mental toughness for that kind of thing. Yeah. And I, and I just wonder too, like. Had that vodka bottle gone to someone else's pod, you know yeah. he he chose very hastily to wake up one person without inspecting the four thousand nine hundred ninety nine other pods to see if there was maybe someone else that he was more compatible with. Right. You know what if he what if he found a doctor? What if he found somebody yeah. else? Like, so yeah, he wasn't really looking at other people's pods. Like when he's he was awake, so it's like everyone's just laying there in their pod, right? So he didn't really like explore that aspect of the ship. He was more you know. Going to dinner, hanging out at the bar, getting drunk, playing Dance Dance Revolution, play basketball, you know, whatever. Like, those are like the three things you can do. You can swim, you can play basketball, you can play Dance Dance Revolution, and you can drink at the bar. That's yeah. like it. It's but fun. I mean, everything, all I'll say is all of his needs were completely taken care of outside of companionship, right? Sure, like the survival was there. Like you got a meal every day, you know, 
drinks galore. Plenty of space to, yeah. to go do whatever he could work beds. out. Yeah. That's what I mean. And yeah. when he finally figured out that he could go to whatever class of suite he wanted, he went into the basically the best type of room that you could possibly go to. I would have never figured out how to open that door, so I would never have made it there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's an engineer, so he's yeah. got the training. He had the tools in basically his toolkit, right? Yeah. He had stuff in the cargo hold. So he was trying to reset this pod for the longest time, and he just couldn't make it work. Yep. So... Was it morally okay for him to wake her up? So is that that's I guess that's big question number one. I would assume, right? Yeah. Well, there's two there's two schools of thought. A should he have woken her up, and B did he wake up the right person? So, where are we going first? I'll, I'll say, did he wake up the right person? Start with that. Absolutely not. <laughs> you gotta wake up the captain, man. Right? He Don't couldn't you have to wake though. the captain up. He couldn't because he couldn't get into the the cabin. That was the captain that was, was sleeping. By himself? They were in the crew quarters, so it was locked off. He couldn't get in. The highest ranking dude outside of there, he needs to wake up. That's and, I agree with and that. And he could have researched that because he has access to everyone's files, as we see. He tried. As I he mean, creeps on Jennifer Lawrence all, all this, this He tried. Time. No. So I think it's your here's here's my thinking. This is and maybe this is this is the way this is my trade. I would have been six months, right? And then I would have thought to myself, if my thing if if my thing uh malfunctioned. I think everyone's like, what if they're going to die in their pods? Yeah. What if nothing? What if they're not getting the right amount of oxygen or nutrients or whatever? I would have woken everyone up. Yeah. <laughs> the whole damn plane would have been woken up. And then we could all get through this together. The collective. And someone would have figured out how to reset all of the pods. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Except I think he broke Jennifer Lawrence's pod. So if so if he opens everyone's pods <laughs> up, he probably flat out breaks them. Yeah. Maybe they're all screwed. So maybe my logic is flawed. So okay, so you as you answered that question. So answer the first question that you asked. Was it okay for him to wake her up? No. It wasn't. He but, doomed her to death. But I get it. You get I it. I get it though. Like he was depressed. Like he was he was just about to kill himself, right? Yeah. Just about to kill himself. So he's like his back's against the wall. He's got nothing left. He's he's swinging for the fences. You know, all the all the cliches you want to put there. It's he gets he goes to a dark place. It takes him a year to decide to do it, but he's like, you know what? Screw it. I gotta do this, or else I'm dead. And I guess he's not thinking of killing her when he does this. He he does, but it's like it's kind of like the juice is worth the squeeze to borrow from the girl next door. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, wise man once said. Right. What do you think? So he didn't kill her, right? He he killed her of old age yeah. preemptively. And right. I think, yeah, morally, obviously, you can't do this. I think I agree with what you had said. Maybe you wake up everybody or, you know, you wake up a bunch of people. Maybe you find out if there's doctors, if there's other people and say, oh, my God, this I, maybe the premise is, is he thought they were all going to die. He thought their oxygen was screwed up. He thought yeah. something was going to happen. And clearly it was because the ship was in trouble. Had he not woken her up, I think we would have seen he wouldn't have been able to do what he had to do. You needed two people to do it. Yeah, right. So in the end, like he saved everyone's lives by waking by doing her that. up. But like that can't factor into his decision. It didn't he didn't factor know. Into he it. had no idea. But I, I think like where his logic was flawed was that he was talking to the bartender for advice. And the bartender, yeah. it reminds me of Kunu from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, <laughs> where he'll just tell you what you want to hear. Like, I don't think you're ready. Yeah. All right, I think you're ready. I think you're ready, yeah. And that's all I can think about Yeah, the whole he's there to motivate you. Yeah, he's like, he's not going to tell you that. He's not going to keep it real with you. But I feel like, you know, I loved him as an actor. I thought Michael Sheen, like I said it before, he put on an acting clinic in this thing. He was fun to watch, and I liked the interaction between Chris Pratt and him. Uh, but I, I actually, I got to tell you, man, like, the second half of the movie dragged a little bit for me, even though that's when the action picked up. I liked the Are, beginning. Dude. But what about what about the love scenes though? See, they don't have enough love. They're, scenes. they're banging all over that. They're they're dropping loads everywhere. They, they that, <laughs> they're just well, the bar. How, do you think they did it in front of the in front of the bartender? Oh, of course. Do you think they did it? You know, he, he was probably like, all right. Yeah. He, no, he was just he kept cleaning the glass. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like he wasn't like rooting them all or anything like care. that. But they're going to the master suite. They're going to like to the to the to the, the mini room. But that's what I say. Like they're banging in front of Dance Dance Revolution, the basketball it, court. Is it so bad? You know, they you know once they fell in love. Yeah. Before the shit hit the fan so to speak it wasn't so bad they're on a vacation they they did fall in love they didn't hate each other at that point they had everything they needed it's it's a 90 year vacation so let's say the bartender didn't spill the beans yes. right and didn't tell her that he that chris pratt woke her up right does he ever tell her no do you think do you think he keeps that to his grave yes. even though he probably should tell maybe, her maybe maybe he would tell her before they die or something of old age but how are you going to know when you're going to die let, let me take let me take this to a real place right now Let's say you have AIDS, right? Yeah, okay. 
You have AIDS. <laughs> this is this is pretty real. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of grim here. And you don't you don't you don't tell your significant other, and you get married, and you go on and on that's and on. It's different though. That's is that a violation. Different? Is it though? Yeah, that's a vi- That's a I major violation. It's a violation. He, he woke her up. She would have been living on the planet. But would she have the, the ship would have crashed? They didn't know. That's true. I, <laughs> I think you're ready. You know what? No, 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 let me take this back. Let me take it back. Say he wakes her up and she has a better life than she'll ever have on that new planet. Say she gets to the new planet. And yeah, like what if she, the planet sucks? What, yeah, what if she died instantly? Yeah, what if an asteroid hit right. it? He gave her a fulfilling life. Yeah. See, now this brings me to, to two points. The first point is, I think her character is written horribly. And it's not Jennifer Lawrence's fault. It's more the the writing and the way that they implemented her. And then the second point is, I think like just the whole idea of her wanting to go back to Earth is a joke. It's a, it's oh, an absolute yeah. joke. It's the biggest joke of the whole movie. So, let, let me tackle this for a second because they obviously each person has a purpose, right? So she, we find out, come to find out, she's a journalist, and she's this like. This this writer, this wannabe, I just need to get the scoop. She knows people, Jordan. And that's all I kept thinking the she whole time. She knows who people are. Like, like it reminds me of, uh, we're big Boy Meets World fans here, mm. and it kept reminding me of Mr. Turner's friend, Eli. It's where a he's deep like, cut. You gotta get to the truth. It's a deep cut, Drew. You gotta find the truth. <laughs> you know, and he, she's so much a journalist, she needs to find the story and write a book about going to this new planet. Oh, by the way, she has a return ticket. It takes a hundred years to get there. <laughs> like, what in the world she's, audacity do you have to think yeah. that the earth is going to be there yeah. when you go back? So she's she, she's just she's such a stone cold bitch, man. I'll she tell you is. what. They, they threw a going, going away party for her, right? She's leaving all her friends and family and they show it like, in like the, in the preview and the, like the little like everybody has a history of their life video that Chris Pratt watches, but he only watches hers. So it's creepy. like the go going away party, right? Where she's going to leave all her friends behind. They're going to be long dead. She's going to 90 years, go to the new planet, write the scoop on the new planet, and then go back to damn Earth in the year freaking 3,000. Or what? Whatever the, whatever the hell else Why? it was. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it, and, and again, it's not Jennifer Lawrence's fault. Yeah. It's just the character is flawed. I'll tell you what. She's going to go back, and you know what? You know what daddy's million dollars that got her there? It's gonna be worth jack shit when she gets back a hundred years from now. And that's how I feel about it. It's yeah. it's a flawed character arc, and I just yeah. don't see it. And then and I remember too, just she seemed like very high and mighty. She had this high sweet. She was nice to him and everything. But do you remember when she started talking to him? She's like, Oh, I met you. I'm gonna write a book about this whole thing. Yeah. And she woke up at 90 years, she's gonna start writing a book. And then <laughs> they were looking at people and they were trying to see what other people were about. They yeah. were trying to they played this flirtatious game of look at this guy in this pod, what's his story? And she she dropped the line of I'm a writer. I know people. <laughs> like, come on, man. It just, she was very pretentious. Yeah. And it could have been, it, it wasn't just because it was her. It could have been anybody. It could have been the Chris, if Chris Pratt was the writer, it could have been him who was pretentious. Yeah. That character, as it was written, was so goddamn yeah. annoying. And l- l- let's not forget the, this famous line where she goes, oh, you know what? It's weird. I've never written about myself. I think it's the best work I've ever done. Yeah, like, it's like really, really, the best work you've ever done is about yourself. Like, honestly, it's like if it's it's so in line with her character. The character it's, development yeah. was just not there so, for me. Here's the flaw of the movie: is that he woke her up, basically killing her early. Which I mean, you could argue that, but you end up hating her. You still resent her because it's a she's a she's written so poorly as a character. So I and I gotta so tell you, you, you can't feel sorry for her. And let me compare this to something that I know is near and dear to you because we've talked about this outside of our show before. It reminds me a lot of Breaking Bad, where people uh-huh. hated Walter's wife, yeah. even though she was clearly in the right and he was clearly in the wrong. Right. Like Jim, the character Chris Pratt's playing, clearly was in the wrong, but because of the way that this character is written on the Jennifer Lawrence Aurora side, you just don't really side with her. At right. least I didn't, personally. Exactly. But it's let me true. tell you, the internet has a, has a lot to say about this this movie here. And there's a lot of stuff where it's like, He's completely in the wrong. This movie glorifies male dominance. Uh-huh. Like not to get into all of that, but right. do you do you agree? Like I, I mean, two guys here talking about that, but right. I don't know how that works. But I, I think there's some the, yeah, there's some beef, but I think it's not unintentional. Personally, no, no, I, I think it's it's the basis for the movie. It's not it's not men versus women. It's not men showing dominance. I think it's the basis of the movie is to ask these philosophical questions, these moral questions of is it was it the right thing to do. Was it the wrong thing to do? Like, uh, you know, how, like how uh, it's forgiveness versus understanding versus, you know, the horror that when you find out it, 
it wasn't malicious intent. Like you could tell, you could clearly tell that he struggled with the idea. He thought about it for a year, and yeah, he, he probably made the wrong decision, which ended up being the right decision. Right. But you know, it's all about fate, and there's also fate involved in there too. But I think if you switch, if you switch the shoe on the other foot, and it was Jennifer Lawrence who woke up early and, and woke up Chris Pratt, I don't think I don't think that story would be played. I agree, right? and, I, and I think part of the issue too is that she comes around and forgives him, right? But I think that actually empowers her because she's the one that's choosing to forgive him. It's not uh-huh. like she, oh, she had to forgive him because she, he didn't necessarily save her. They work together as a team. Right. And I think that the point of it actually wound up being the right thing, maybe because of fate, maybe because of destiny, the fact that they needed each other yeah. to get through this. Uh-huh. I think that actually empowers her. And I think people kind of lose, lose that point. I don't know. Maybe I'm not the well, right person to be talking about this, but and, and and she saved his life because if he had not woken her up, he probably would have killed himself. Yeah, you know? I agree. So yeah. she actually saved him, and yeah. you know she she wound up becoming to choose the fact to not go back into sleep. She put that power on herself. She took control of the situation. Mm-hmm. So I think that actually empowers her. So I don't know. It just was interesting because when I was trying to do a little research about you know this topic in particular, it was very heated online. There was a lot of people that felt very strongly about that angle of the movie and they were very upset and i guess i don't know i just didn't think about that as i was watching it maybe that's my ignorance but yeah. i don't know i i didn't look at it in that light yeah i don't know uh not yeah not to get too much into that topic but it seems like men can't be assholes in movies anymore without there being a bigger bigger issue at play yeah sometimes movies are just movies you i know? think it's warranted in in, mo- in some cases but yeah. in other cases i think it's completely unintentional yeah, it's just a movie being a movie you can't movies can't be movies anymore uh, i don't know I agree with you, but you know, it's, it's, it's also like, I think my distaste for some of the movie too, was the acting. Like, I think these two actors and act, the actor and actress are very good in other things. I just think that they weren't so great in this and Chris Pratt was really good by himself, but I think when they got together, it just wasn't, it wasn't what I expected. And I think maybe the writing on the Jennifer Lawrence side kind of ruined it for me because she's clearly talented. She's won, you know, Academy Awards. Yeah. So I I don't know what that aspect of it was, but did it bother you at all by any by any chance? Yeah, well, I just felt like it just seemed like a mashup of, well, let's get the two hottest stars from 2015 and let's just just, just mix them together and throw them in this thing. Yeah, I didn't really think they were compatible as a couple, and I thought Chris Pratt did okay when he was by himself, but I I still didn't like I didn't like him to carry that part of the movie either though. Like yeah. I don't think he was good enough to just carry it. Like he's goofy. Yeah, and like that helps a little bit, but the dramatic aspect of it, I felt like he kind of struggled on it. And then the and then the the middle and end part where like with a relationship where they got together and then they ultimately fell apart and got together again. Yeah, it just seemed like they weren't the right fit for each other. I, I don't know. I like him as an actor and I like her to, as an actress. I just think you know the chemistry just wasn't there for me. And maybe yeah. it was because it was so subtle. Like oh now she's awake here they are. There wasn't really any build up to it. And when he tried to you know uh, court her so to speak, <laughs> you know I don't know how to say it. Yeah, he taking her on dates and stuff like that. I guess that built it a little bit, but. I thought Michael Sheen, and I mentioned it a couple times, he was just so good, and maybe that's what, the comparison, he was so good that they were kind of weak, yeah. didn't do it for me. So I don't know, like you said, the movie felt like a mashup of a whole bunch of different ideas, yeah. and I think it never really formulated. But having said that, I still enjoyed it. Sure. I still thought it was good. I had an idea that I just thought of pretty much, um, so we were before we went on the air, we were talking about M. Night Shyamalan, yeah. different M. Night Shyamalan movies, Split and The Visit. And like Emma Night Shyamalan being back, right? He's back. Yeah. It got me thinking, what if this was an M. Night Shyamalan movie? And, yeah. And you had me thinking about, you were, we were talking about he didn't even look at the other pods. He just saw Jennifer Lawrence and like, oh, this is the girl of my dreams. Look at this hot girl, right? What if this movie were a little more sinister, right? <laughs> okay. Let's 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 turn this movie to an R-rated horror movie, right? All right. With a twist where you don't know it's a horror movie. So... We see him waking up Jennifer Lawrence, right? Having a like a mental, you know, like should I, shouldn't I with the bartender, so forth and so on. He does the, the movie plays out like it does. And then in the end, Jennifer Lawrence dies, you know, maybe trying to save the plane, maybe trying to do something. And then we find him going to another pod and all right. doing it all over again with another girl. Yeah. And another girl, another girl. Turns to find out. What if he's done this 10 times? Yeah, we just didn't know about it. We just didn't know about it. What if Jennifer Lawrence was girl number four, right? Yeah. And like the bartender says something strange. And we're like, like maybe the bartender is like the clue that this has happened before. Yeah. But it's so subtle that we haven't picked up on it yet. Yeah, I like that. And then there's a reveal towards the end of the movie that, oh shit, he's done this five times already. I like Jennifer that. Jennifer Lawrence is girl number six. 
And then they show like the pods where the girls are just dead. He stuffs them back in the pod. Yeah. And they, they look, look like they're sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> right. So it's like all yeah. these people, these pods are like dead. He's woken them all up one at a time and killed them one yeah. way or another. That's a movie that I would be interested in. That's See, an M. Night Shyamalan twist. Let me tell you, I would be into. along the same lines, yeah. let me take this. And we talked a little bit about Alien Covenant. See, I like the aspect of this, that there's a company that's sending them to this new planet. And maybe it is Alien Covenant here coming up. But I like the aspect that maybe something more malicious was happening. That's what I thought was going on. And they play that angle a little bit. And it yeah. makes me wonder, like, was it rewritten or something? Or was there some type of reshoot or rewrite that took it a different way? Because as the movie goes on, we find out that it was just coincidental. They ran through this minefield and all of these key systems were were messed up because there's giant holes in the cargo hole. And there was air basically getting sucked out of this thing. They needed to fix the leak and it penetrated, I think, the core yeah. So the core was was leaking energy or something. Always the core, man. And they needed to they needed to patch it back up. But having said that, like they talked a little bit about this company. It seemed very sinister in a way, and I kept getting these vibes from it. Yep. Like, what if the computer took over, kind of like um, uh, two thousand one, right. you know, where the computer took over the the ship, and maybe the ship was slowly turning on the on the passengers. Right. And I I, I like that aspect of it too. Like, I would have liked that more. I think than. Maybe the fact that it was like, oh, yeah, coincidentally, they ran through an asteroid field. Well, they alluded to it a little bit where I maybe the bartender or one of like the computer prompts says like Chris Pratt was like, yeah, my 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 pod malfunctioned. And they're like, that's impossible. The pod has never malfunctioned. And they said that multiple times. It was like the ominous movie. music, right. too. So it made you think if they never malfunctioned, let's let's assume that's a true statement. Then somebody messed with his pod. Yeah. But no, it just turned out, oh, it just opened by accident. Right. And, and maybe it would have been too much alien if the bartender was the one, because it'd be like David from, yeah. you know, Prometheus. But I kind of kept thinking that maybe he had something a little bit more sinister, too. Like, yeah. he seemed too happy-go-lucky for yeah. things. Or if there's maybe they weren't alone in there after all. But, like, yeah, who knows how where this script came from? Who knows if somebody messed with it, how many hands it went through yeah. to turn it into the rom-com that it kind of turned out to be, and then into, like, the drama... Um, you know, break up, split, get back together type thing that it turned out to be an the action end. movie. It kind of like the, the love story took over the sci-fi part of it and like kind of dominated it for yeah. the most part, right? So who knows how heavy sci-fi it was and it was morphed into romance. Yeah. It could have changed. The script could have been rewritten how many times and we wouldn't have even known about it. I, I would be curious and I'll have to do a little bit more research after this because it, it just seemed like there was some something that seemed a little off. Yeah, I looked it up. I couldn't find too much, but you know, who knows? I mean, yeah. Who knows what 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 kind of changes the script went through? So we talked a little bit about the actors and the act acting. Do you think this was miscast? Yeah, I, I do because I like I, like I said, I think I think it was just a mashup of the two hottest actors and actresses, and um, they didn't really care about chemistry. Because I didn't think they had any chemistry, even when they were together. I, I just didn't seem right. See, to me, this seems very similar to something that one would see Tom Cruise in. And I was thinking about that the call. whole time I was watching it because it reminds me a little bit of uh, Edge of Tomorrow. What was the other one that he was in that Oblivion. we watched? Oblivion. He's, he's been doing those sci-fi movies. It's that sci-fi slash, you know, kind of action movie. And all I kept thinking about was Tom Cruise should be in this. Tom Cruise should be yeah. in this. Too old, man. He, I mean, for Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence, yeah, because yeah. he's, he's like her father. Yeah. But I just kept thinking, maybe this would have worked differently if somebody else was in it. Like, Tom Cruise is such a, uh, I guess, accomplished actor that he absolutely could carry anything that he's in. Yeah, right? right. So would it would it have been different if he was in it? That was my struggle with Pratt, is especially in the in the first half or the first, you know, 30, 40 minutes or so when he was by himself doing the Tom Hanks thing, that he wasn't Tom Hanks. Yeah. And he, you know, he couldn't act himself next to a volleyball the way Tom Hanks could, right? But can Tom Cruise play the lonely person by himself? Because we haven't really yeah, seen he that. Yeah, because he can talk to himself pretty good, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be maybe too comedic then yeah. in that case. It would be too funny. Well, it was it was somewhat comedic there for the most part of, of Pratt's, you know, solo campaign there until the very end when he got depressed where he, you know, it's the quick scene of attempted suicide and then he finally found Lawrence. Yeah. But no, I, I, think, I think Cruise definitely could have pulled it off. It's just that... I feel like you needed younger actors. Not just not to say that he would have played alongside Jennifer Lawrence, he would have to change her too. But I think that he could have pulled it off with a younger face. So should we try to recast this? Yeah, let's go for it. Because I think, you know, from are we should we put an age range on it? Because 
I think like these these people are obviously under thirty, right? I don't yeah. know how old Chris Pratt is. I assume that he's like thirty five. Yeah, we'll just call it under forty. So yeah. for for female actresses, right, give me some female actresses. I'll, right. I'll give you my quick quick opinions. All right, so I'm gonna give you a list, and you just tell me whether you think some of these people would would be good in it, right? All right, uh, this is, is this opposite of Pratt, or oh, are we man. are we talking just the general for the character? Maybe to be just. Less- Less annoying than Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, put, put somebody. And keep in yeah. mind exactly how the character was written, too. Yeah. So I don't know maybe if Jennifer Lawrence comes across as snooty in that I don't, I don't consider her a writer like this. I don't. Yeah. yeah. So here I'm going to name some of these people right. and just go with the same character. Assume Chris okay. Pratt or Tom Cruise or whoever you want to I'm going to assume see. Chris Pratt, all right? Even just though I think we should change him, too. But. See if this person right. should fit into this type of movie. Can this okay. person be in a sci-fi Well, they have made movie? it better than Jennifer yeah. Lawrence. Not to say they're better than Jennifer Lawrence, yes. but maybe they fit better in this movie. So I actually have one that I think would be good. Right. Maybe she's not a better actress, but... She's right. been in this type of movie before. Olivia Wilde. She was in Tron Legacy. Yeah, but I don't think she's that good. <laughs> you don't I don't think like her. Good? All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going down this list. How about Megan Fox? No way. She she's she's she terrible can't actress. No, no. What about Yvonne Strahovski? We've she's seen not, her in 24. She's not good enough, although I like her. She's not good enough. How about no. Jessica Biel? Jessica Biel? No, no way. She can't She can't do the drama. What about Elizabeth Banks? Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth Banks. I think she's, I don't want to, I don't want to put a number on her. But I feel she's like she's too old. She's borderline too old. <laughs> she's yeah. too old. What about? I have Amy no idea S- how old she is. By how, the way, how about Amy Smart? Amy Smart? No, she's too. If this movie had a smaller budget, is that <laughs> bad? Is that, is that a, is that a bad? No, of, is that I a mean, bad? she's you know she's been in some smaller movies. Yeah. What about Jessica Alba? If this if this were if this were two thousand and two, then Amy Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba. Yeah. Yeah, she could do it. And you know who else? I have a, a top pick for this. Kira Knightley. Kira, yeah, I'm thinking this should be a, a British person. Because uh, Kira Knightley that. writes, she strikes me more as a writer. And if she said that with a British accent, yeah. I feel like I wouldn't have batted an eye. Like I'll, it needed the accent. Like I was thinking like, what's her name? Amelia Clark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was thinking maybe her. She's not that great of an actress. That's though. all right though. I we think can, she's got a British accent. It helps. <laughs> and it asks things, man. Well, yeah. I mean, I think probably, I, th- I think... I think she would be my my pick, Kira Knightley, if I had to completely recast yeah. this. And then I'll give you a couple more. Jennifer Garner. Jennifer, no, hell no. 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 <laughs> she she can't even handle the Capital One commercials, man. Really? No. no. What about you know who would be in this now? Huh. And I wouldn't I don't actually think she'd be good at this. Olivia Munn. Olivia Munn? No. She, she would be in she this. She can't do the drama. She's 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 comedy. Yeah. She, she can't do the drama. But she would be in this. Yeah. What about Marilyn Ackerman? See, actually, I'll tell you what though, I could see her being compatible with Chris Pratt. Yes. Yeah. She'd be more compatible with Chris Pratt. What about Malin Ackerman? Malin Ackerman, I don't, I don't see her in space. And I, you know, I thought she was weird in Watchmen, and I feel like I, I would compare her to a role in Watchmen. Like it's just not that that's a space movie, but I feel like they were in sport. They had space. Yeah. Yeah, they were in space. In, in, like Watchmen, it. no. Scarlett Johansson. Yes. This is a ScarJo movie. Absolutely, all over but it. it's like that's not fair because like she like it's like saying Christian Bale because of course he, like he could do anything. She could do anything. And Mila Jovovich or Jovovich. Mila jo- no, it's not Resident Evil, so you can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. She's busy. She's busy, Drew. <laughs> She's got Resident oh Evil. Oh my god. To, to, to film. Oh boy. All right, should I give you some actors? Yeah, give me give me so some. I, as you were running down that, I looked up some actors. So should we? I'm gonna pick my top three of these. Yeah, these are all these female actresses, and we'll figure out whether they're compatible. So I'm gonna say Scarlett Johansson. Keira Knightley, or who was the third? I liked others? Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. Okay, yeah. so it has to be compatible with one of those three. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna run down the list here. Some of these people I don't even know. Um, <laughs> some of them are cheating, like Tom Hardy. Yeah, like, well, he would be good in this. It's like cheating, though. Of yeah, course, he, he's great. <laughs> He'd be so yeah. good. Uh, another former robot on a play on a on a spaceship, Michael Fassbender. Yeah, he would be good. Right? But Again, it's that's cheating. He's, but he's, he's he's got the accent. That's great, yeah. right? He's got the accent. He, he would be good, but he's, he's done it too much. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, he definitely, <laughs> definitely. He's, he's too like. He's too up, stuck up. He's too up his own ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. I, I'm I'm deleting. My him. pod broke open. <laughs> that's what he. That's what he would be. I'm deleting him. He, uh, he's too old for those girls anyway. Miles Teller, the kid from Whiplash. He's not. He, no. Too young. He's not too good baby face. He's been yeah. in, he's great in Whiplash, but he's been in some other things that I've watched, and he's not that great. Like he was in Fantastic uh, Four. Ugh. I don't know him. He's from an X Men movie. Who was uh, it? Sh- James McAvoy. Oh yeah, I mean, he's great. He's I mean, in I, Split. I mean, I know him. He's in Split. Yeah, I know. I he's know amazing. him. But it's like uh, I don't. He's not a, not a spaceship. He would have been. <laughs> he would have been great. Not a spaceship. Nah. nah. <laughs> I don't, see him, like I don't see him. I don't see him. Larry David's cousins. 
Nah, nah, I had that for lunch. I had that for lunch. <laughs> Chicken, I already had that for lunch. Another cheat code, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, he. Uh, I don't see him on a spaceship. He's my boy. He's, not, in he's not acting in any sci-fi you movies. Know, he would. He actually would have been. Well, he he's in. Um, he would have been really good with with Jennifer Lawrence. Actually, I think. yeah, I think they would be compatible, but. You know what though? I like he fits with Emma Stone though. He fits yeah. with girls that aren't as La good La looking Land. as him. Right. And that's not to bash Emma Stone. I think she's very cute. But I feel like <laughs> it's better when he's the prettiest one of the couple, right? <laughs> yeah, Isn't I guess. It? Isn't it work better that but way? He, I mean, you know, <laughs> no offense to Emma Stone, but he's been in two movies with Emma Stone. The other one being a uh, Crazy Stupid Love, I think it's called. Yeah, that's right. She's in that. And like they, they they fit together. They should be dating. I don't know. Not, not to, to go be, People Magazine on everyone. That's but, <laughs> to be weird, but. Yeah. He's a beautiful man. He I mean, he's, yeah. you know, it's very hard to find someone that he is not more beautiful than, right? Third, uh, third leg of the tripod, Paul Dano. Eh? Eh? Eh. Eh. It's a weird looking. <laughs> Give me Emil yeah. Hirsch instead. Um, no, the Ramsey from Game of Thrones. That's not going to work. He's not really that good. No. Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, he's in a space movie as we speak. Yeah, he would be great. I mean, yeah. he's he's good. It's called Alive or Alive. I forget what it's called. He, he's good. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, he could do it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see him in space. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's good, but I don't. I don't see him in space. I don't, I don't know. know. He he was. I liked him. I don't know. Obvious answer: Ryan Reynolds. He fits with Lawrence, but I don't know if he's dramatic enough to pull this off. No, he's been in. He's been in some some good stuff. So I didn't see that. What's the movie? Is it called Life? I think it's called Life. The new one that's out. Oh, I him would and Jake love Jones to see it. Yeah, yeah. And I think he looks like he's it's more of a horror ish. After than a, than Deadpool, a drama. he's made a comeback. Yeah, you know, he he's he's really come back there. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Eh. I don't think you like him. I don't think you like. Him. I used to like him, yeah. but I, I think he's a little. I'm just. I'm kind of over him right now. I'm just kind of over him. There's a dark horse, Ben Foster. Yes, like, but he, he can do it. They need. Here's the thing, though. He's not well known enough. He's he's well known enough, I guess, in some of the yeah. indie roles that he's been in. But you would really need a, a big name actress to carry this movie. What if, what if we what if we had Ben Foster and Amelia Clark? And we just cut the budget in like half. Like it's low budget. Yeah. Like Moon. Yes. Yeah, cut the budget in half. Don't worry about the special effects and just tell the story and make it a twinge darker. Yeah, that could And then could you work. got a great movie here. That right? could work. Yeah. But if, instead, instead we got the Hollywood movie and it was all right. But if you really want to ratchet this up, I'll give yeah. you one actress that you could put in here that you're going to make this. It's going to win an Oscar automatically. Yeah. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> Meryl Streep <laughs> and. <laughs> Warren Beatty and Warren Beatty <laughs> starred passengers. A couple of seventy-year-old people the going to repopulate planet. the planet. No, as the retirement the planet. Retirement, retirement yeah. planet. <laughs> That's a. I can't even think of like an older guy. Like who would it have to be? Like what's I, the, I what's the, who's like an older like Oscar-winning actor? Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Meryl Streep. <laughs> It's like, it's like a retirement home. Yeah. They're going to retire yeah. on a new planet. What's the what's the name of the kid from um, <laughs> the kid who plays college, even though he's forty? Um, oh, Breckin Meyer, Breckin Meyer, <laughs> Breckin Meyer, and, and Amy Smart. Yeah. And we set the movie in nineteen ninety six, and then we have passengers. Mister Bean in there too. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you really need. I just wanted to say the word Breckin Meyer. That's all. No, I mean he's he's classic for playing somebody thirty years yeah, younger like, than he. Yeah, you mentioned Amy is. Smart. I think we have a chance here for Amy Smart. We just it's the wrong decade. <laughs> it's the wrong decade. So she was I, in everything back then. Yeah, I mean she. You could probably name you know at least ten movies from the late nineties to early two thousands that she was in. I, I love like, the Butterfly Effect. Butterfly we, effect we should do that movie. That's an underrated. We should do that movie. movie. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher was actually very good in that movie. Yeah, I would absolutely do he that. He used movie. the ball Zach and Powers. You know, you know the scene where like he does too many um flashbacks, he starts to nosebleed, he has yeah. an aneurysm. Yeah. Like that's because like that's actually real. That His actually acting. happened. Because he was acting he used the ball as good acting power <laughs> and he started to like have nosebleeds. He acted so yeah. hard. That was actually that's in the deleted scenes. Like that's like the director's commentary. No, I, I actually really you. enjoy that movie. I think it's uh, it's it's a pretty <laughs> underrated movie. If yeah. you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. It's it's not like going to win an Oscar. We should put it on the list. We should do definitely. it. Definitely. Let's let's yeah. do it. Yeah. So I think we talked enough about this thing. What this do you thing. think? I mean, what do you think about this thing? What, how how was talking like Andy Reid here? Like, yeah. let's get this thing let's get going. This thing going. Yeah. What do you, how do you feel about this movie overall? Like now that we've kind of, we praised it a little bit. We bashed it a lot. Let's bring it back. It's not very good, is it? Let's bring it back in. <laughs> <laughs> bring it back in. I mean, how do you, how do you rate it? Like if you had well, to give it, are we giving our ratings out of 10? Okay. So it's. Let's talk about the positives. 
The first half is very good. Yes. Um, it's thought provoking, right? It has a lot of moral quandaries. The questionable CG was good. Qu- questionable decisions. It looked phenomenal. It had Andy Garcia. It had Andy Garcia in it. He <laughs> played a great role. You know? Can we, hold on. We got to talk about that scene for a second, right? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure he was top build in this at some point. Basically, the movie goes, they show up on the planet. We said spoilers. So the, they died, but they yeah. made the ship into what they wanted it to be. They planted trees everywhere in the ship. Which is kind of BS because people Screw have to that. live on this tree now. Planted trees. What if they probably could they could have screwed the what if they had built the tree too and the high roots went out. and the roots went out and it ruined the plane? Yeah. So so basically we see the reaction of yeah. the captain of the ship. It was a good reaction though. It's it was a, it was a, like Kelly from Girl Next Door. Yeah. It was like it was like Wade's World 2 when they when they took the bad actor out at the gas <laughs> station and put Charles Destin in. <laughs> Like Garcia was the second guy where he get had that good reaction. He cut, he walks out of the bridge. Is this what it's called? I guess on a spaceship. Sure, he walks bridge. out of the bridge. Starboard. Uh, <laughs> he know, looks the around. Poop deck. It was the, the poop deck. Maybe. <laughs> he looks around the room, sees a bunch of trees, and gives like I don't know how much money he made, but yeah. he gave a million dollar. Oh look. yeah, he, he acted the shit out of he it. He gave a million dollar look. He was probably in it for all of maybe thirty seconds. Yeah, and movie over. Goodbye. Well, the backstory to that is that. The end of the movie, the the alternate ending is him, Andy Garcia, going through and like exploring the exploring the spaceship and seeing what exactly Pratt and Lawrence have been up to when they decided to not go back to sleep and just live their lives alone on the spaceship. Would you have liked it better if they did that? Sure, I would. Yeah, sure, because I I didn't think the movie was that great to begin with, so I guess anything different <laughs> would have been better. So, so I didn't mean to interrupt your ranking yeah. of your ratings here. So, but getting back to that, yeah. like I didn't like the ending. I thought that you know the whole saving part at the end was very rushed, and I was I was it's funny because I was watching this movie I was kind of waiting for it to end yeah but at the same time like it ended very abruptly like oh I guess this is the end now like, this is it right but at the same time I didn't hate it so I'm very conflicted so I'm gonna give it like a five out of five and a half out of ten okay I'll give it a five and a half out of ten and I'm going to add point four points. For Andy Garcia. So 5.9? I'm going to give it a 5.9. Just, you don't want the, is it like the, the gas station where it's like a dollar ninety nine point yeah. nine? It's not $2? Right, exactly. So yeah, so I'm going to, uh, so yeah, it gets 0. 0.4 bonus points for Andy Garcia. So right. 5.9. So 5.9 out of 10. Yeah. All right, so I will give it, I'm going to give it a five base level. Okay. And then I'm going to add a point because I loved Michael Sheen. I thought he was okay. great. So I'm going to give it a full point for that because he put on an acting clinic he made the movie so much more enjoyable because Chris Pratt had somebody to interact with. And then when Jennifer Lawrence came, the whole Kunu thing, he was so dumb. He was yeah. a robot. It was it was inadvertently funny. Like, I know it was supposed to be funny, but it was funnier to me for some stupid reason. Sure. So I'm going to add a point for that. And then I'm going to add half a point yeah. because I thought that it looked phenomenal. Right. You know what? Now I'm thinking going about six it, and a half out of ten. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm going to subtract a half a point. You're going to... For just solely for the writers, for the line, I've never written about myself. I think it's the best work I've ever done. <laughs> Maybe I should. So but, just to hammer home the fact that I do not like Jennifer Lawrence in this movie. Yeah. Just that, just for that point alone, because I wanted to like her. So the character, the, the written character made me not like her. So now, you, now we're down to 5.4. 5.4. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should subtract half a point two for the fact that she said, I'm a writer. I know people. <laughs> like, come on now. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to add. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to add 0. 0.7 points 0. 0.7. because there was more than one love scene. And I like to imagine that they just banged all over the, over the spaceship. I mean, that's what I mean. And you, it comes back to the whole, the two hottest people in Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were pretty hot. I mean, she was beautiful. He was beautiful. They had a uh, beautiful romance I mean, there. Th- there were loads all over the place, Drew. <laughs> it was, they're slip- who, Andy Garcia woke yeah. up and he slipped. Not to, not to pull a Frank Reynolds, but who cleaned the loads? <laughs> who cleaned the loads, Drew? Was it the robot? <laughs> that robot couldn't get out from behind the bar. What if what what no, if those now, little like the little the little toaster robots? Passengers two is coming out. Yeah. Right? What if like they had a baby, right? So it was just the two of them, and they had they had like a kid. Say they had two kids, right? And so say the parents die, so there were 90 years until everybody yeah. woke up, right? So let's do the math here. So if they had kids when they were like, say they were 40 and they had kids, like yeah. just, just say they waited a while and they're already in the 30s. The kids grew up and they were 50 and then everyone started waking up. They started waking up. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. See, I would like to see that. Right. I wish they the would have shown The brother and the sister. Them. Right. If they had kids, that would have been pretty cool. But see, have, look, I'm going to get taboo here. Today. <laughs> 
So you got the brother and the oh, sister. No. I'm going I'm to lower my voice, too. Going this is, these can't be spoken aloud. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> so true. So they have the brother and the I'm sister. Cringing. They don't know about things because it's just like the spaceship, right? And then the parents, they die. So they don't know that they're not allowed to be together. <laughs> no. So like accidental incest. Oh. Like, what if it happened? See, that's rated NC-17. I think that's the side to end the episode. Yes. <laughs> then we got to wrap things up. <laughs> so I'm going I'm going six and a half out of ten. Yeah. You're going, I don't even know what your score so I added, is. I added, I see, I subtracted. We need so I was like down to five. I was down to 0.4, then I added 0.7. I got 6.1. 6.1 for the loads. <laughs> I get, I'm doing six six and a half out of ten. That's all you need to know. But yeah, I think we said enough about this movie. You know, thanks to everybody that stuck with us here. We'll be back. I think we said in two Thursdays we'll be back with the substitute with Tom Berenger. If you haven't had a chance and you enjoy our show, you're enjoying it. Leave us an iTunes review. We have 44, I believe, or six yeah, away, six away from, from the the split. The promise we promised that John Claude Van Damme split on camera. At our fiftieth iTunes <sighs> review, so we're getting there. I stopped stretching in the yeah. in the break that we've had, so I gotta I gotta get back to it. You but do it, man. I mentioned uh, the substitute on Thursday, May fourth. That episode's gonna drop. If you're looking and you want to send us an email, we got a bunch of emails. Thank you to everybody that's written to us. The Last Road Podcast at gmail dot com. There's a contact button on our website, the Last Road Podcast dot com. We're also on Twitter at the Last Road Pod. We're very active on Twitter. That's where we post a lot of our schedule stuff. Hit us up on their um, Facebook page, facebook.com slash the last row pod. We have an Instagram page where we post too pretty frequently. And um, yeah. if, again, if you have any questions about the substitute that you want us to answer yeah, on the pod, right I in. mean, there's plenty of time because we're not going to record this thing probably for at least a week. Yeah. So just send them on in and we'll, we'll, we'll shimmy them into our notes Hit and us we'll up. make sure to answer it. If you want to say hi, send us an email that says yeah. hi. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks here. So like... They gotta wonder, have a mop, right? Gotta have a mop. And like, but the the bartender was kind of stuck behind the bar. Yeah, he you couldn't think, like, get out. Do you think they could have like, you know, he's an engineer. He could have like had him like fastened him somewhere else. <laughs> you know? they, they had the, the little robot then. Yeah, Picked they the did the sweeper robot. The sweeper yeah, robot. sweep the loads. But he didn't. <laughs> he, didn't have, he picked up the cereal. It was like a vacuum. Yeah. It's not a wet vac. Unless it's a wet vac. Can be. Can't. He's a wet. Yeah, he's a